my loves, I know this video has been a long time in the making. I'm so excited today to finally share my newly renovated kitchen with all of you. Now, due to the COVID, this project has taken way longer than anticipated. So to begin with, once everything was removed, the first thing we did was change the flooring. It was stained, but I really didn't want to go through the process of hacking, so I opted for vinyl tiles. These tiles are also slightly softer than the regular ones, and that really benefits my feet and my heels while I stand here washing and baking. Vinyl tiles are glued on with waterproof glue, making them suitable for bathrooms and kitchens as well. Now first I want to explain that this is our wet kitchen. In some countries it's referred to as a dirty kitchen or a utility kitchen. Basically, this is where we do our heavier washing and store our less used pots and pans. This kitchen was dilapidated and needed to be functional because we need to use this space all day, every day. It's very important for everything to have a proper home and to keep the passage empty, especially because it's through here that we get to the laundry room and the pantry. This space is very narrow, so we can only fit one length of cabinets. We had to make the most of it. So many of you ask me about kitchen renovation, but I usually refrain because I'm a professional organizer, not a designer. But since I did put a lot of thought into this project, and I did have the help of my daughter, who is an interior architect, I thought I would share my options and decisions with you. Now, as you enter, the first thing you will see is the oven. It used to be in the dry kitchen, but I have relocated it here so I can have a complete baking station. I want to store all my mom's nozzles and our baking accessories in this cabinet here and in these two drawers below the oven. Technically, our kitchen ends here. There is a beam here and then a small space with a pillar behind it. Beyond that is the side entrance which leads to our side yard, which is where we have a vegetable farm and also where we sun dry our clothes. To make everything look flush and continuous, I added a wood cladding to cover the beam and extended the kitchen further so I could have a separate broom closet. It also gave me additional space for supplies in the upper cabinet. And this way, my brooms are a part of my kitchen and yet not really a part of them because they are at one side. On the other side of the oven and baking area, I have a row of upper and lower cabinets. One of the most important decisions I had to make was the finish of the cabinets. I knew I wanted white, but I had the option of gloss or a matte finish. I preferred the matte finish because there is a lot of water in this area being used and water leaves marks on a gloss finish. Matte is more easy to maintain, which was my first consideration. If it was a storage and dry kitchen, I would most definitely have gone for a glossy look. Now, instead of hardware, we have actually used an aluminium frame to reinforce the durability and to give it a sleek look with no protrusions which can impede the narrow pathway. Now, the upper cabinets are actually four cabinets or rather two double door cabinets and a dish rack. I love having a dish rack because it keeps the counters empty, giving me more workroom. This rack is stainless steel, as I have been told that chrome ones peel more easily, while aluminium ones tarnish. Now this is a double tier with a rack for dishes on the top, and a flat cup and bowl tray, and there is also a water tray to ensure the wet dishes do not drip on the faucet, but are instead collected in this takeout tray, which can be drained as needed. In making the most of the space, I added a small cabinet above that just to store lunch boxes and such. I have not organized the cabinets yet, but I have just completed stage one, which is getting things where I want them to be and ensuring there is no spillover of any category beyond the allocated space. Now, this helps me keep my belongings in control. I have also added another narrow 30 centimeter cabinet here, which houses things like water bottles and also my parchment paper, cling film and that sort of thing. So below that, these 30 cm are empty space. I intentionally left that empty so that I could place a trash bin in here. 
I personally do not like bins in the cabinet for hygiene purposes. Now next to that is the washing basin. I opted for a single bowl instead of the double one that I used to have because I wanted something more spacey. I also chose something very deep as my intention is to bathe Zoe in here so I don't have to bend over in the bathtub. This sink is 870 cm and it is 1.5 mm thick so there is ample room to do my pots and wash my pup and at the same time there is less clitter clatter of dishes on the sink. This is in the Evans brand and I really love the drainage of it as well. It's very well planned and the drainage is absolutely wonderful. I initially wanted a faucet that can be pulled and retracted but the height was more than I had to spare. So I settled for this faucet which does have some height for larger pots and in place of the retractable faucet I got an add-on. Now uh, this is what I use for washing purposes, be it the sink or Zoe. For this kitchen, B and I agreed on a stone look. We got this tray, which by the way I love, along with a plant, also in a stone pot. And I have these old jars, which I got in Australia. And I'm sure you've seen me use these before. But as the lids were no longer airtight, I discarded those and I'm using just the jars here. I'm glad to have found a purpose for these as I not only love the texture, but also the color combination. I now have a very clean space to put my sponge in after I wash it at night and dishwashing liquid in the other. Let's move on to our countertop. There are many options available in the market, ranging from laminate to solid surface all the way to granite. Now we have a solid surface in the dry kitchen, which we covered with marble contact paper and I've shown you all that. That lasted about a year and has frayed around the sink and joints. So knowing that there is plenty of water here, we opted for marble quartz. I love the fact that this is a slab that has no joints where water can seep through. And no water is going to absorb through the top, damaging the counter. It may have cost a little more, but I feel in the long run, it's really going to work out well. And one tip that I want to give you here is that if you really want to get some expensive things and they really seem expensive in the store, maybe you should try sourcing them via wholesalers. Now, that's what we did for our quartz and that's what we did for a number of accessories that we bought. And we have managed to keep this well, well, not really, but sort of within budget. Then under the large sink is an equally large under the sink cabinet. Since it is really big, the sink actually scoops deep into the cabinet and there are so many pipes leading to the washing machine on the right and the dishwasher on the left. So this is going to be a very challenging space to organize, but I look forward to it and then of course sharing it with you. Now, one of the main purposes of redoing the kitchen was to make space for the dishwasher near the sink for convenience. It used to be where the oven is now, so walking all the way across was always a hassle. It works so much better now that it is directly next to the sink. And I'm still using the dirty and clean tag with a magnet to avoid mistakes. Now this cabinet here is the only one with any accessory. I have these three pull-out trays which are for my pots that I use just occasionally. This last but not least cabinet may be narrow. But with its width and height, it's going to be perfect to hold my large serving trays, cake racks and large baking sheets. I have not put any shelving in here yet, as I want to utilize the height to all its potential for bulkier items which do not fit anywhere else. Having lived here for a year now has actually been a good thing, because now I know exactly what I need to store, what doesn't fit anywhere else and needs a home in this kitchen. On the counter, I have these stone vases in white and a grey stone pot with a white orchid. I had the power points for the dishwasher and the oven concealed and just kept these two points accessible for using my food processor, blender and of course my cake mixer right here next to the oven. I added some artwork, again going for the overall theme of greenery. One says believe and the other says smile. Both fantastic vibes to have in your home. I really hope that you have loved this kitchen setup as much as I have 
And I want to thank my project managers, DSS Solutions, a local contractor, for handling my work so well and executing to perfection what B and I had in mind. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and you will give it a thumbs up so I know you want to see more kitchen and pantry videos. And until the next video, this is Ravina saying, Happy Homemaking!